Hi guys, so last night I finally got to watch Megan after months of trailers and hype around it. And I've got to say it, I was disappointed. Now, I will admit my expectations, high. There was a, there was a high bar. And I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the film at all, but I was expecting way more. And I'm surprised at how much praise it's still continuing to get after its release. Before I get into all my thoughts and feelings, please like, subscribe, comment. Remember, these are just my opinions. I'm not saying you can't love this film, think it's like in the top 10 horrors you've ever seen, although you probably haven't seen that many horrors if that's the case. Um, oh, and I'm gonna spoil things, so be warned. So the first problem comes right out of the gate for me. The film starts and we get the certification. It's a 15. Big mistake, huge. This movie needed more gore and it needed more crazy, more weirdness. But it couldn't go far enough with either of those without becoming an 18. I get that the film had a very specific teenage audience in mind and you can tell by how modern it is and how it's been produced. You know, the dancing's very TikTok, the music's very modern, but there were so many scenes where they baited violence that never came, and so it was never satisfying. Like, she kills two men in a lift with a machete, but you ever never actually see the slashing itself, you just see blood dripping off of the blade. And it would have been such a better moment, because these two characters were like douchebag businessmen. Like... As a captive audience, we have a bloodlust. We want to see these men die brutally. And so cutting to the next scene, we immediately feel like done over. We have cinematic blue balls, so to speak, because we thought you were gonna show us the drama. She kills the neighbor's dog and the neighbor never finds the body. She then jet washes the neighbor's head off again that's all implied. The camera pans across and shows us the water from the jet wash turning red, as if I'm watching Scooby-Doo and not a blockbuster horror film with a multi-million dollar budget. I want to see her head come off. I'm not saying that horror has to be explicit. I mean, Hitchcock made viewers scream with chocolate syrup in Psycho, but this film is not a suspense thriller. It's not a slow burn vintage style horror. In fact, it's the opposite. It's like a superficial slasher type modern horror. So we need creative kills in high definition that we can be grossed out with. It needs to deliver on the violence because the fundamental issue here is that Megan just isn't a scary movie. There was never a moment where I was frightened and I was in one of those recliner seats where it's very easy to get scared. I also found that the marketing of this film gave way too much away. Like it was one of those instances where every memorable sequence was already shown in the trailer. So it felt like you were watching this film for the second or third time instead of like fresh eyes. And it's a catch 22 because I think most people went to watch Megan because the trailer was so entertaining. Like the trailer became a viral video overnight, but I was almost never shocked with what was happening because I'd already seen it in the press release footage. One thing that did take me by surprise, and I think there should have, it should have featured more, was that um, Megan is a bit of a chanteuse. Megan is very, um, she's very musical and she sings a couple of songs during the movie's runtime that were very creepy. Like when she's putting the little girl to sleep because she sort of sits next to her while she's sleeping, she sings, um, she gives her a rendition of Titanium that was so freaky. And it was one of the only scenes that did that because I didn't know it was coming. And that's what's important. You know, why would you show us most of the movie in the trailer. What? Why would you do that? I think Megan's personality as well needed to be more consistent because there were moments where she was really evil and really sassy, which of course I enjoyed, 
but they were far and few between and there was rarely any preamble so it came right out of nowhere like i get that most of the movie she's playing on this innocent little girl demeanor but then if she's just gonna flip and start killing people it needs to be more macabre and more funny because when you watch the trailer the standout moment of course is when she's dancing in that hallway she's doing all of this you know to to um dolls and it's fabulous that song has like such a nasty beat drop and sh she's doing the back flips and no it's like a forward flip into a spin like there were so many moments where they could have added some non-verbals like a head lift a wink more dancing for sure because in the context of the movie that scene where she's dancing in the hallway it's less effective because we've seen little proof that she's this aloof crazy character with her own personality and so it just comes out of nowhere which makes it more funny but makes it more confusing as well because it's like well what's this why is she doing that and when she drives the sports car back to the house and she starts to play um the melody from Eminem's toy soldiers on the piano again that's a really fun choice and it just feels a bit too little too late because then we're at the climax of the movie and I still don't really feel like I know who Megan is. So we get to the final climax, the little girl and her aunt, um, who I re just realised by the way was the crazy girl in Get Out, um, they work together to defeat Megan. Uh, they have this other robot that you control with your hands and the little girl sort of has like a fight with Megan using that robot. It was very predictable because they introduced the robot at the start of the movie. So it was like a Chekhov's gun, like, oh, this is gonna come up later. They're gonna duke it out as robots. Um, Megan doesn't get damaged enough in my opinion. She loses some hair. She has like a diagonal scar down her face that like cuts through the silicone, but she doesn't look um battle damaged enough like when you watch something like the terminator like it's so much more horrifying as the movie progresses because like arnold schwarzenegger is like going through it and that's what i wanted she just looked ugly and i don't know like she gets ripped in half screwdrivers put for her brain the movie ends with a sign that Megan is still alive. It's a clear nod to the inevitable sequel that this film's going to get because it's made all of the money. Um, I left the movie theater feeling vindicated because everyone around me was also talking about how disappointing it was. Like from expectation to reality, it just nosedived so quickly. I went in hoping to see like a child's play style slasher you know, but with a modern twist about how children shouldn't get too swept up in their gadgets. And while it definitely delivered on that philosophy, the actual horror itself was so lame. The pacing of the story was really lame as well. At certain points, I remember I was watching it and I was thinking, am I watching a Lifetime movie? Because it was so fast paced, so cookie cutter murder flick that I was annoyed at myself for buying into it. Because I think that's the real kicker. The trailer showed us a concept that was so refreshing, so cool. And you go into it knowing that like the titanium bones of this movie are solid, but then you watch it and it's sort of filled out with this gross rubbery silicone, so to speak. Yeah, I think that's a good metaphor. So those are my thoughts on Megan. Um, let me know if you enjoyed it. I don't think it's for me. Um, thank you for watching and as ever, see you later.